I'm convinced that we're in the Laodicean age spoken of in the book of Revelation, for we have all the symptoms mentioned in this letter to the lukewarm church. Praise God that Jesus shows us the problem and also provides the remedy for it. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind and naked, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and dine with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Revelation 3, 14 to 22. If you look at my messages on the seven churches of Revelation, you will see that these prophetic letters were not only for the seven churches in Asia Minor in 96 AD, but also to seven church periods that have been since that time. I believe we are now in the last church age of Laodicea before Jesus' return. You may say, that's quite depressing. What hope have we got? I would like to point out that Jesus is merely identifying the spirit of this age. It's the spirit we are battling with, but we don't have to succumb to it. In fact, he says that it can be overcome. Jesus has also said that we are to be of good cheer, for he has overcome the world. I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16.33 we are told in Scripture that we should not be ignorant of Satan's devices, for in having this knowledge it equips us in the battle. Praise God the spirit of Philadelphia is still with us today, which is the spirit of revival. You will see later in this message that this Laodicean church can have the greatest of all the rewards if they overcome. The first thing that we need to identify is the problem and to know our enemy, and knowing his tactics we can overcome him. You'll notice that Jesus first appears to this church as the beginning of the creation of God. This age of Laodicea began in the 1800s with the Industrial Revolution, and it was in these days that the theory of evolution was born. This teaching has seriously undermined the authenticity of God's Word and is now taught in schools, and the Bible is considered irrelevant. Jesus reminds the Laodicean church that this teaching on evolution is not from him and that he created all things. The first symptom Jesus makes us aware of is the sin of apathy and indifference. This symptom of lukewarmness makes God sick. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Jesus says that Laodicea is lukewarm, neither cold nor hot. Lukewarm is a mixture of cold and hot neither red hot or ice cold, and this is displeasing to God. He'd rather you were cold or hot than lukewarm. Today we have many in the church that say they are Christians, yet they act like the devil. It's a symptom of the end times. You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money. They'll be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their parents, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from men like this. 2 Timothy 3.4 it's interesting to note that the actual city of Laodicea was situated in an area where the water was warm, 
fed by hot springs and not good to drink. An aqueduct had to be brought in to supply fresh water for the city from some six miles away. This is all very well, but it made Laodicea very vulnerable in a time of war. If you wanted to destroy them, then cut off their water supply. Self-sufficiency and deception. Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind and naked. Another interesting point about this age is that the people of Laodicea are saying one thing, but God says another which indicates a spirit of deception upon the people. They think they are right, but they are wrong. They had a high opinion of themselves that didn't cut the mustard with God. For instance, they consider themselves rich and in need of nothing, but God said they were poor. Yes, they had material goods, but were not rich towards God. The actual city of Laodicea was the banking center of Asia Minor and was known for its riches. God said that her riches were deceiving her and made her self-sufficient and proud. It's interesting to note that she once refused the help of Rome to rebuild her city after a devastating earthquake. She said that she didn't want any help from Rome, saying that she would do it herself. Isn't that like so many people today who say they don't need God's help, for they can do it all themselves? Our society encourages us to lean on man rather than upon God with all the government handouts, credit, and an abundance of medical services that tempt us not to put our trust in God. Sometimes God is the last person we turn to when we are in need. The church today in the Western world may have lots of buildings and finances, but in God's eyes we can be poor, blind, and naked. But there is a cure. Spiritual poverty. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. The three things that Laodicea needed to cure her of her blindness, poverty, and nakedness was real gold, white raiment, and eye ointment. The trouble is, when you are deceived, you don't realize you need these things, so God often has to do something drastic to stop us in our tracks. The first thing that he addressed was their poverty. This Laodicean spirit causes us to value worldly riches far more than God's true riches. We may have money put aside for a rainy day, yet we are lacking in faith, and this makes us poor. Jesus said in Luke 18.8, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? We are told to buy gold, real gold. The Bible says that God's word and our faith are considered gold in his eyes. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. More to be desired than gold, yes, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. And the genuineness of your faith, being made more precious than gold, that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honour and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 1.7 White garments. In the day, Laodicea was known for its sheep that produced high quality wool, and they were proud of their manufacturing of clothing. In this age, we too can be affected by the spirit of Laodicea and be more concerned with looking good than being right in God's eyes. Today, we see clothing shops everywhere and lots of fashion magazines that encourage us to buy more and more clothes. The sickness of anorexia amongst women is a symptom of our age. We should, however, be more concerned with the clothing that is pleasing to God than in the eyes of men. The clothing we should value is the garment of salvation, the garment of praise, the robes of righteousness, and the armour of God, for without them we are naked. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Isaiah 61.3 For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation and arrayed me in the robe of righteousness. Isaiah 61.10 Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Ephesians 6, 10-11